What's going on YouTube? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update of Bitcoin. We're also going to look at a few other coins, but mostly we're going to focus on Bitcoin because when Bitcoin has these big corrections, typically the rest of the market's going to dump as well. So that's just something we always have to be aware of. And also guys, what I wanted to put out before any of this, there's been so much scammers and people impersonating me on YouTube. It's not me. I'm not going to have any what's up app. I'm not sending you anywhere like that. Okay, you'll know my personality. That's not my personality. I'm not going to direct you to anybody else. I've studied for three and a half years to be my own manager of my money. And I definitely wouldn't have Debbie or Jim or Joe or whoever the heck it is managing my money. So please don't get scammed in this place or in this space. So I just want to put that out there. But what I want to do here was look at Bitcoin on the one day time frame. And also, if you get some from these videos, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And we'll dig into this. So we're looking at Bitcoin on the one day time frame. And what we're paying attention to today is the close. I want to see where the daily candle close is going to be. Right now, if we closed how we are, that would be a bearish engulfing candle and it would come on heavier volume. And what we have to realize is because this space can get so overbaked, if we are to continue up to $100,000 and hit some of those higher levels later on this year, we're going to have to have these corrections. And I actually prefer them to be real fast and quick and sharp like this to where we drop down very fast, it gets bought up, and then we continue to keep moving to the upside. I mean, it's better than sitting through a correction for, you know, 15 days or whatever. It's going to be 15 to 30 days. It's nice sometimes just to have that big dump, but we have to pay attention to the candle close today because if we start creeping down lower in this and we don't have this long wick, that's going to show that the sellers, the bears are really taking control and we may have to go down to some lower levels. And if we do start dropping down to lower levels from where we previously hit, we hit roughly about $46,782. So if we end up losing that, the next area I would look at to the downside to see if we could find support is going to be around $40,748. And that's also going to correlate with the 50 moving average or the 50 EMA, I use EMAs, but you can see we're still, guys, and this is what we have to be aware of. Well, we're back in here when we had a correction, it was 18%. When we had a correction this last time, and this was for a couple weeks there, it was about 31%. And the correction that we just had overnight, we dropped about 20%. And when you're looking at these things, so we still could have another leg down. It's going to depend on what type of bounce that we get out of here, what type of buying pressure that we have. But we need to be aware of a few things here. If we're taking a look at the stock, we're at 66 and 86, and we started to have that downward cross. You can see that there, right down in this area. So we do need to be aware of that. The RSI, what I use is the 30-day RSI. So it's a little bit, gives me a longer-term perspective. So we weren't really in overbought territory. We we're getting close to it, but we weren't technically in it for crypto because for crypto, what I consider overbought is around that 80. Once you start to get to the 80s, 85s, because many times we can even push up into the 90s. And what we previously got to here was about 75. And then we had this big selling pressure. But typically what you want to look for when we're paying attention to these things, so you have this big fall the next few days up is what's going to be so important for us because we're going to have to try to get up through now roughly about $58,000 to set a higher high once we confirm where we're going to set our higher low. And it's just along this whole trend. That's what you want to look for here. So you can see higher low, higher low, higher low. This could be our higher low. We're just going to have to wait and see if it's one of these where we bounce up on weak volume, then we have another flush down, or if this was it. Right here, we just had that big sell off, and then we're going to spring forward. So, this is a tough spot. And what I actually had, I had some buy orders, not for Bitcoin, but for some of the altcoins. And what I did, I just put them real low, and I actually caught some. And that's one thing I would tell you guys is to put those limit buy orders in areas like off these moving averages. So, say you think there could be another huge flush to the downside, you know, put some limit buy orders at 33,353 if you're able to, and let them sit there for a while and see what happens. And if you get one of these really long wicks, it can be a great opportunity just when they bounce back like they are today. And then, if things aren't looking healthy, you get out of those positions, you made a little profit on that, and you sit back and you let the dust settle. So if you do put those limit buy orders in certain areas, guys, off support and whatnot, let me know down low if that's something that you really do and that you've taken advantage of. Okay. And also what I want to point out is when we look at corrections, so let's get out here for Bitcoin. I want to go to the previous cycle. We're going to look at the corrections and how deep they were. 
and it's important. So you can actually see I had the days measured out. The corrections, many times they could be 35 days, they could be 12 days, 18 days, seven days, four days. So they can just be sharp and quick as well. But when we're looking at these corrections and we're taking the price range, many times it would be a 42% correction. This one here was roughly about a 40% correction. Up in this range, we had a 30% correction. So, I mean, guys, this happens in this space. And actually, in my opinion, it's very healthy for the space. And it lets, it lets us breathe a little bit. You know, may we go lower to the 50 down to $40,000? It's definitely a possibility. And this is where, you know, guys, if you're a longer-term investor, you're still in, you know, not financial advice. You're still sitting in those coins. In my opinion, we're not going to go into a bear market until we start crossing down through the 200 moving average. Once we go below the 200 we're having daily candle closes below that, I think that's going to be about it. But we're not anywhere near that area yet. We just are having these warning signs coming up that we may have and spend some time in a correction coming up here, which I still believe would be healthy for the market. So if we look at the technicals here, we are looking at a two sell, 10 neutral, and a 14 buy on the one day. So we're still in the buy category. Oscillators, one sell, nine neutral, and a one buy. And what this did, it put our relative strength back at 64 now. I mean, we could keep going lower. We want to stay up above 50, in my opinion, but we still could get milked a little bit lower. But for the relative strength, we've cooled off now. We're not up around 85 when we're trying to make higher moves and go up to around $70,000. So what we have for a sell is going to be our momentum. The MACD is going to be a buy. All our moving averages from the 10 all the way through. Besides, let's see, the whole moving average, all the rest are going to be buy. So we're still trading up above those moving averages like we talked about. We haven't even had a daily candle close below the 20 EMA yet. And guys, that's where in this space, you have to be appreciative of the moves that come in. I mean, when you're making 20% in a day, Many markets won't make that in a year, and I've talked about this before. You know, don't be greedy in this space. Take your profits when they're staring you in the face. Take some off the table when we get super extended. You know, get your initial investment out of there if that's the case. Say you put 5000 in and you're sitting on 25000 or something, take that 5000 out to be safe, and now you're, you're, it's the, you're playing on the house money now. And that's the type of stuff that can help you. Don't be, ever be afraid to take profits because we do have these 30, 40, whatever percent drops. And then when you have cash, you're able to capitalize on these opportunities when they come. And it doesn't happen all the time. So, you know, just be careful in this area. Guys, look, guys, look at these spots, these support resistance, have a plan, and continue to watch it throughout the day where we have that candle closed. The more wick, the better for the bullish case. God bless each and every one of you. Take care.